Hi, welcome to Aviation Theory. In this video, we will talk about atmospheric pressure, specifically what it is, its units of measurement, and the instruments used to measure it. So, let's get started. First of all, let's look at what is pressure in general. Pressure is defined as the force applied on a surface per unit area, as we can see in its formula. In other words, we can say that it measures how an applied force is distributed over an area. With this in mind, we can affirm that the greater the force exerted over a certain area, the greater the pressure. And at the same time, the larger the area over which that force is exerted, the lower the pressure. Let's look at a couple of examples to better understand this relationship between force and area. Suppose that two people of equal weight are standing on a loose snow surface. Now, the fact that they both weigh 80 kilograms implies that the force they will exert on the snow will be the same in both cases. However, the difference is that the person on the left is wearing regular shoes, while the one on the right is wearing special snow footwear with a much larger sole. With this, it is evident that the person on the left is distributing those 80 kilograms over a smaller area than the person on the right, who is standing over a larger area. So, if we apply the pressure formula we have just seen, in the case of the person on the left, having a small surface, the pressure exerted on the snow will be higher. While on the other hand, the person on the right, standing over a larger surface, will exert less pressure on the snow. For this reason, the person on the left will tend to sink into the snow, while the person on the right will be able to walk more easily. So, now that we have seen the general concept of pressure, let's move on to atmospheric pressure. But first, let's remember the main properties of air. As we said in a previous video, air is a fluid composed of various gases, and its main properties are temperature, pressure, density, and humidity. And although in this video we will focus on the pressure, we have to say that all these variables are directly related to each other. So with that being said, let's see what is atmospheric pressure. This is the force exerted by the air of the atmosphere on the Earth's surface, and it is produced by the weight of the column of air directly above a surface. Now, this concept may sound rather abstract, since in practice, and in our daily life, it seems that air has no weight. However, the truth is that the air has mass, and therefore, the Earth's gravity causes it to have weight. This means that each air molecule exerts a certain weight on the Earth's surface, and therefore we can affirm that atmospheric pressure will depend on the amount of air molecules above a surface. Now, you might be wondering, if air has weight, why don't we feel it pushing us down against the surface? Well, the thing is that, as with all fluids, this atmospheric pressure acts equally in all directions. This means that it is distributed equally around all the objects inside the atmosphere, and this is the reason why we don't feel the atmospheric pressure. So, having understood the concept of atmospheric pressure, let's look at the units of measurement used for it. As we said previously, pressure is equal to force over area. Consequently, the units of measurement to be used must take this relationship into account. The international system of units uses the Pascal as a standard, which is equal to 1 newton per square meter. As we can see, a unit of force over a unit of area. However, in meteorology, to measure atmospheric pressure, the hectopascal is often used, which is equal to 100 pascals. However, the hectopascal is not the only unit of measurement used. Other widely used units are pounds per square inch, millibers, inches of mercury, and millimeters of mercury. Here is a list of the most commonly used conversion factors between these units. Now, it is important to mention that in aeronautical meteorology, the most commonly used units are hectopascals and inches of mercury. And a general rule of thumb for quick conversions between these units is to divide by 34 to go from hectopascals to inches of mercury or multiplied by 34 to go from inches of mercury to hectopascals. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that in some cases, you will see the terms hectopascals and millibars used interchangeably, and this is because these units of measurement are equivalent, so there is no difference between using one or the other. So having seen all this, 
Let's move on to the instrument used to measure atmospheric pressure, which is the barometer. However, there are different types of barometers. In fact, we can classify them into two main types, the aneroid and the mercury barometer. This last one is further subdivided into the fixed cistern or Q barometer and the adjustable cistern or Fortin barometer. Now, although we will not go into detail on the differences between these two variants of the instrument, let us look at the basic principle of operation of the mercury barometer. A mercury barometer consists of a vacuum glass tube that is closed at the top and open at the bottom, and as we can see, the tube is partially submerged in a bucket or cistern filled with mercury. This way, atmospheric pressure will push the mercury in the cistern, forcing it up the tube, but at the same time, the weight of the mercury itself will try to counteract this. With this, the height of the mercury column depends directly on the atmospheric pressure. For example, if atmospheric pressure reduces, then the height of the mercury column in the tube will decrease. While on the other hand, if the pressure increases, the height of the mercury column will increase. Taking all this into account, atmospheric pressure can be determined directly by measuring the height of the mercury column in the tube, either in millimeters or in inches. And actually, this is how the units of measurement of inches of mercury and millimeters of mercury were born. So, now that we have seen how a mercury barometer works, let's move on to the aneroid barometer. This instrument consists of a sealed capsule with a constant pressure inside. And it is designed so that atmospheric pressure can enter the instrument and try to compress the capsule. This way, the capsule will expand and contract depending on atmospheric pressure changes. And since this capsule is connected by means of gears to the needle on the dial, the corresponding value of the atmospheric pressure will be indicated. And as an important fact, this exact same principle is the one used by barometric altimeters, but instead of indicating the pressure, they are calibrated to indicate the corresponding altitude. So, with this being said, let's look at the barograph, which is an instrument used to record pressure changes over time. In simple terms, it uses the same principle as an aneroid barometer, but the difference is that it not only indicates, but also records pressure changes over time using a constantly moving paper. This instrument is very useful for identifying certain behaviors or pressure change trends within a certain period of time, and therefore allow for more accurate weather forecasts and models. We must emphasize that atmospheric pressure plays a major role in the development of atmospheric conditions, and it is therefore important to know how to read and interpret changes in pressure using the barometer and the barograph. Now, in general we can say that at sea level, atmospheric pressure has an average standard value of 1013 hectopascals, 29.92 inches of mercury, or 760 millimeters of mercury. However, we must keep in mind that the pressure is constantly changing, and therefore these are reference values only. Actually, atmospheric pressure varies both horizontally with distance and vertically with altitude, but we will deal with that in a following video. I hope the information presented in this video was useful. If so, don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. It would help me a lot. Thanks for watching, and I see you next time.